So a couple weeks ago, I got a Shapoko 2 from Inventables, put it together, did a video on my main channel, but I probably already seen it. Um, awesome, I love it. It's so fun. It's it's cool to play with, and um, I've got some ideas for, to incorporate it into some upcoming projects. Uh, I don't know if I, I might. I don't know if I'll make a specific project 100% from it. I might, but. Um, I see a lot of little uses here and there where you can add to a project with it. So I'm really looking forward to playing around, playing around with it a lot more. And I've been experimenting with different software to get information to the CNC. And right now, I'm probably going to do a video in the next couple weeks, but uh, right now I've got a pretty good workflow to go from SketchUp to MakerCam to uh, G-Code to the machine, which kind of sounds complicated. But it's not, and because there's individual steps for individual tasks, you can get really customizable results with not only the, um, the design that you're going with, but how the machine actually cuts the design and, and in what order uh, the, the cuts will be made. So it's very cool. It's very interesting. I'm totally intrigued by the whole setup, so you probably see some more little stuff here and there with it. But I've been playing around with it, and yeah, anyone who's into sign making, Instant signs. This is so cool. This was from the Easel app, and you just type it in and click cut. I mean, it doesn't get much easier than that. That's that's so cool. Of course, you guys probably saw the little Hello World, and that turned out really cool. And I've got some different birch plywood scraps. Um, but I played around with my logo, and this was horrible in Easel, but going through other programs, I was able to get the tooling a little bit better as far as uh, how it was cut, and the depth, and the speed, and all that good stuff. Uh, I guess you could do that in Easel, too. But I, anyway, I had results, better results in a different program, um, and really cool to play around with. I spray painted this when it was all done. I wasn't planning on it, but I was like, huh, maybe if I could spray paint it and sand it off, it would look cool. I was mainly testing how well the sand, uh, the spray paint would adhere to the cut area. Uh, I knew it wasn't going to turn out great over here. Uh, a better approach would have been to just use a little paintbrush and paint in the black and then sand the inconsistencies on the top. But uh, very happy with the way that little test experiment playing whatever turned out so oh, it's just so much fun to play with so probably the main uh, question was uh, uh, about the uh, the fuzzies that I was getting the quality of cut that I was getting uh, has to do with a couple different things number one this is just really crappy cheap uh, plywood and it splinters really really easily so it probably would have done better in a, you know uh, like a walnut or some type of hardwood um, but the the main problem that caused this was the spindle that I'm using is uh, it was going a little bit too fast for what I was cutting so I could have slowed it down and got better results and also the cutting bit is not only an up cut bit which will pull the fibers up but it's a single flute up cut bit so there's not really that much cutting edge doing the work it's it's all uh, it's, it's all being done by one cutting edge which uh, better results would be if to if you get a multiple flute cutting bit, which I do have. I do have a one eighth of an inch four flute carbide cutting bit, um, but I didn't want to use it in the in the first run. I wanted to use it factory as is, the, the you know ship to your door condition. Uh, that is um, a sixteenth of an inch bit. The one I got now is a, is a one eighth of an inch bit. I don't know if the size will make any difference, but I guess that will decrease your feed rate as well as your depth per cut. Um, anyway, uh, I'm going to upgrade the spindle in it, so I'm probably not even going to use the better bit in this particular spindle. But that's the reason why I was getting some fuzzy chip out whatever. Uh, not a deal breaker at all because like I said, all that can be changed and with quick little sanding and you're good to go. So I got a couple more stickers in the mail and this first one is it's kind of funny. Um, well. First off, this sticker uh, was sent to me in a, a non-return addressed envelope, so I have no clue who the heck sent me this. But it's funny because I bought this sticker and sent it, bought this exact same sticker and sent it to one of my friends uh, around the holiday season. And warning, it contains a graphic message in the text, but uh, check this out.
So yeah, that's going up on the cabinet. And I got a sticker from, guess it, who is it, who is it, who is it? You can't see the light. CarmichaelWorkshop.com. Steve Carmichael sent me this one. Good guy. Check out his channel if you haven't already. Probably have. But uh, if you haven't already, check out Steve Carmichael's Carmichael Workshop channel. John Bielman sent me a couple stickers. This is the uh, a firefighter crest sticker logo thingy. I don't know what that's called, but it's firefighters. And uh, thank you to all of those who are firefighters and save lives. That's really cool. He also sent me a um, state flag. This is, what was it? Is it Arizona state flag? Oh crap, I forgot. Yeah, it's Arizona state flag. Uh, put that one up there, that's cool. I've been to Arizona, uh, no, I haven't been to Arizona. I went to New Mexico um, when I went to the Grand Canyon. Never been to Arizona. So Mark Griffith and I were talking about some logos and other stuff and uh, I like my logo that I have now for jscustomcreations.com but it's not really um, friendly for images as far as having a nice place to put it on the images. It would be, it would, it's much easier to have a square or a circle general shape logo where you can put it just about everywhere. But because mine's so rectangular, it's hard to fit it in certain areas. It's hard to fit it in a lot of areas on images and like hats and stuff like that. So uh, anyway, he threw together a quick little logo. Uh, JB it says J, well, JB and a star in white. I know you can't see it that well right now, but it'll show up really good in the cabinet. And uh, he sent me some of these uh, bigger stickers. I might put one on the back of my truck. I like it. I really like this. And um, some smaller ones too. I think you can see that pretty well. But yeah, if you, word of advice, if you're ever gonna design a logo for your business, make it short, sweet, simple, something like that, where you can put it in the corner of images, in the middle of a hat, anywhere, proportionate height and width, and it'll be a lot easier going down the road. You won't have to deal with all the crap that I deal with with my logo. But yeah, that's very cool, thank you very much, and I'm gonna put all of these on the cabinet. I haven't done a SketchUp video in a while. That doesn't mean I'm gonna stop completely doing them, but just haven't had any desire to make another SketchUp video. Uh, I know a lot of people do like them, and I appreciate the feedback on that. And also, feedback on SketchUp videos. Um, a lot of people have asked, and I personally said I was going to do this, um, the process of going from the completed model in SketchUp to the plans that I make, uh, the cut list and all that stuff, I don't use Mainly the cut list is what people ask about. I do not use the cut list plugin because it sucks. It really does suck. And um, I, it's just, you have to do so many things, specific ways in order for that, for those uh, objects to generate in the cut list plugin properly. And if you're spending that much time while you're working on the model to get things so that they will generate quickly, well then you're not really losing, you're not really gaining any time by having a cut list generated. So what I do, is I manually, once the, once the model is done, I manually move it, uh, copy it to another area of the project, uh, do a parallel projection, flatten everything out, top down view with the camera, and then manually move everything into where it needs to be to optimize cuts on whatever material you're working on, whether it's plywood, sheet goods, or the actual boards. That's basically what I do. I'm probably not gonna do a video on it. I know I said I was going to, but because I already have done a video on it, if you search back through my YouTube channel for the bread box with plan, and then like skip halfway through the video because the video kind of sucks. But the process is right there. I do it exactly how I make a plan right now, except it's not that complex of a project uh, with the bread box. So that's how I do it. I said I was gonna do a video on it, but I honestly, I'm. Honestly, probably not. People have noticed I have blue tape on my door, and the reason being is to stop the draft. The actual door itself is completely taped shut. Um, I had no really good way to seal it shut, and I had a bunch of cheap blue tape on hand, so I sealed it shut like almost two months ago, and I haven't opened the garage door since, 
it stops the draft. I don't have any type of insulation in the door, any you know foam panels or anything like that. It stops the draft and it keeps it quite a bit warmer in here than without the tape. You know, I used like a quarter of a roll, so it wasn't that expensive. And when the time comes to open the door, which hopefully will be within the next couple weeks, because it is starting to warm up quite a bit, then I just pull the tape off. It's it's uh, the method that I went with that night because of just whatever I had on hand. But that's what the tape is there for to prevent uh, draft of my warm air in here leaving the shop. I'm about to make a router fence for this router table and get it completed and tested and all that good stuff. And uh, that should be out this Sunday. You guys have a great week and I will talk to you Sunday. Well, I'll talk to the camera and you'll see it on Sunday.